I haven't taken any of my drugs today. I'm just remembering now. I love to be productive. It makes me feel alive, especially when I forget and it's already 3.45. Welcome to the Kitchen and George Show! As you guys may have noticed, we are shooting in a new location. So our previous shooting space, it in order to reach it, there were a lot of like common areas you had to go through, like stairways and hallways and stuff. And so we're now shooting at a location where we don't have any shared common areas with other people. It just feels a little bit more stable and we wanted to stay safe. Guess what today's video is about? Guess. You already clicked on it, you know what it's about. Yeah. Hoop boop a doop, this is our ADHD experience. And you guys thought we would never make this video. Well, guess again, suckers. It's the next video you see. We want to talk about kind of our experiences with ADHD and getting diagnosed and kind of what it feels like. We each go about our day with our camera and you film every time you lose something, lose your train of thought, and you film yourself every time you find a motherfucking stick. <laughs> what if we lose the camera? What camera? The G7X. Oh, I think that's a good idea. What's up, MTV? Welcome to my crib. <laughs> Obviously, we are not doctors. No, we're not. We are fools. We're not diagnosing you. If you say that we're diagnosing you, we will come and get you in the night. Fun fact about this video, not only is it our ADHD video, it's also sponsored by Bright Cellars. Yes, Bright Cellars is a way to find personalized wine selections that are sent straight to your door. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Later. No, 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 you can't get it now. Not yet. Back from this interruption. We should define ADHD. ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. You may think it's just about not being able to pay attention but actually, there's so much more. There's an inability to sit still, an inability to complete any tasks. You pick up things and then you lose them moments later. You have 10 things on your to-do list and then you do like a third of all of them and then five hours has gone by and nothing is done and you start to cry. And that's all a day's work. <laughs> and you can be sexy. No, be you can be criminally sexy when you have ADHD. <laughs> Decent for damn, that's a dangerous yeah. dick. <laughs> we are obviously two different people. We have two different experiences. Would you like to start or would you like me to start? I can start, okay. I'll start it. Fine. So I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was, I believe in seventh grade. So I was like 11 or 12 years old. Wow. Yeah. I'm sort of like a unique case because I know that a lot of women aren't necessarily always diagnosed until a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But I think my ADHD kind of manifested itself in ways that were a little bit easy to spot, especially because I have trouble sitting still, I can get a little restless, I have trouble paying attention, stuff like that. Prior to meeting you, I had the worst ADHD of any person I knew personally. Yeah. So when I met you, I was like, Nice. <laughs> passing the torch to Jen right now. Jen is the queen of not paying attention. I stopped paying attention <laughs> in this song. <laughs> it's time to take my meds. And I kind of wanted to show people what taking my meds looks like because because I have to take three. This is my pill for ADHD. This is like a 27 milligram pill. It's extended release. So I take it and the medication gets released all day. This is an anti-anxiety pill that I take in conjunction with the ADHD medication. And these are my antidepressants all at once. So we're obviously very different. Jen was diagnosed as a child. I was diagnosed as an adult. Here's the thing about my ADHD story. It's gonna be a little humble braggy and I'm really sorry. I was like one of those kids who had a combination of high functioning ADHD and I was also like really smart. When I combined those two together, I was able to like basically fake my way through school. I didn't have like behavioral issues. My issue was that I couldn't commit to any sort of task. I didn't pay attention in class either. I would just glom onto like things people said and I was able to like kind of fake like my knowledge of themes. I would like latch- You basically were able to hide the fact that you had ADHD because you were able to perform decently well in high school. I was or able to a larger degree where they wouldn't notice that maybe you were struggling. Yeah, I was one of those women who slipped through the cracks because She's really smart and everyone just kind of assumes that I can do it. But yeah. the, the truth is, is that I was faking it. And it wasn't until I got to grad school that faking it started to catch up with me. And I got my master's degree in screenwriting. And the thing about writing scripts is that they're long and they require a lot of work. And that's the other thing about ADHD. It messes with your ability to manipulate information inside your brain. I just could not wrap my head around like 
three and four act story structure. I couldn't do it. Like I could understand what it looked like and I could identify parts of it when I looked at movies. I could not, for the life of me, do it myself. Like You knew something wasn't right. I knew something like, wasn't right. It was like, why am I not getting this? And so I started to do kind of badly. My teachers, who were all men, I don't think they were properly equipped to understand what was going on. I think they thought that I was just lazy. I mean, that's what they tell most people with ADHD. <laughs> I was called lazy my whole life. Yeah, it's yeah. just like people with ADHD are often called lazy. And it's like, yeah. I'm not lazy. You're my, trying really hard. I'm trying so hard. I'm firing on all cylinders just to talk to you right now about my ADHD. Because really, I want to look at that cat over there and that picture on that wall. And I want to hang out with you and be like, boop, boop, boop. And then I want to jingle up this little medication thing. What was I talking about? You yeah, basically what it is is like, <laughs> you got diagnosed and it took a while. But there weren't really like supports in place to catch you and to notice you needed help. No, it honestly wasn't until my last semester of grad school. My advisors were all just like, you need to figure out what's going on with you. We honestly don't know if we're gonna be able to like pass you and like give you your masters. And I was just like, ah! I'm an overachiever, so I'm very used to like not failing. And I was like, what is wrong with me? Why can't I do this? You know, failing is like, mm. it's never like, as bad as you think it's gonna be. I know, but I've never failed. I was always really good at just being like, one step. That's so awesome. <laughs> There's a person at the door. Oh, there is. He's just leaving a package. Okay. A man <laughs> at the door? I was like. So I took a test that measured my IQ in like using different ways. And one way was with information I'd hold in my head. And the other way was with information I got like on the page. And if there's a difference between those, apparently you have ADHD. I also took this test, I'm just gonna say this right now, 13 years ago. So please do not yell at me if things have advanced or if I'm saying it wrong. I don't remember what test they gave me. I mean, I was a kid. I like distinctly remember getting like them being like, here, we're testing today, today's testing. And I was like, all right. I feel like we know a lot of people with ADHD. Do we? I do, but I feel like I know. I don't. It's funny to have other people with ADHD as close friends because I feel like for some reason I tend to just like draw in a lot of type A people who are really looking for like a friend that they can kind of tell what to do. Same. And I am that friend. Like most of my friends, and a lot of your friends too, are very type A. Yes. And we are the friend who we're like, listen, we are a lot of fun. <laughs> you are gonna tell us what the plans are, yeah. and then we are gonna show up. Yeah, basically, we're we are <laughs> not gonna make the plans. We are maybe not gonna drive. <laughs> But we are gonna be there. But in this dynamic, I'm the type A friend. You are the type A friend, yeah. yeah. The other thing about ADHD is that it makes it hard to make decisions, which is why we like to talk to you about our friend, Bright Sellers. Why do we like wine? I think wine is like super beautiful and alive and like is the perfect accent to food and like it's always like a fun little adventure in your mouth. This whole video has been about how we don't like making decisions. And so Bright Sellers just made a bunch of decisions for us and yeah. sent us some delicious wine. Bright Sellers sends you wine from all around the world. So we took a little quiz mm -hmm. where we answered seven questions about our likes and our tastes. And Bright Seller took this information about things we like to eat and smell and turned it into a personalized box of six wines. Plus they have great customer service and they're all about wine education. Are you ready to unbox it? I'm so excited to unbox it. Let's try, let's unbox it. So we got this Chardonnay, ooh, from Paso Robles. <gasps> Paso Robles is one of my favorite wine regions in California. Oh, wow. What's this? Hers and Heim, Heart and Home. Oh, this is from Austria. I've never tried a wine like this, actually. Oh, well, we gotta try that. That's oh, yeah, wild. Oh, this is a Malbec. I love Malbecs. Ooh. I'm a big Malbec fan. Ooh, we got a Shiraz from Australia. All right, this is a 2017 Merlot. From where? From California. Oh. And then the final wine is called Pet Name. It is a Cabernet, a 2019 Cab from Santa Rosa. Oh, Santa Rosa. It's yeah, from... California. So we got some stuff from California. We got some stuff from all around the world. These are all wines I haven't heard of before. Yeah. This is a great time to try cool things from the safety of your home. And Bright Sellers makes it possible. When you get a Bright Sellers box, you're given match cards. And so these are essentially cards that tell you all about the wine that you've been sent. So you'll get tasting notes, you'll get potential pairings, they'll give you information on the profile, the alcohol content. And it's actually really cool because look how cute these are. I know, plus it'll tell you, so like which what are you most excited about based on these little, little notes? Based on the match card, I would say I'm really excited about probably the meat cute Merlot. I really like a good Merlot. Well, cause it's got like plum, raspberry, black cherry, 
chocolate. Chocolate notes. So I'm excited to try these Herzenheim because it's baking spices, cherry, earth. I like earthier things. Also, I've actually never tried any Austrian wine before. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I know. If you would like to try Bright Cellars for yourself and try some new wine, you can sign up at our link. Bright Cellars is giving our followers 50% off their first six bottle box of wine. So check it out. It's a little adventure in a box. Now back to our adventure, which is the adventure in our head. I was not paying attention. <laughs> what did you not do? I was not paying attention. <laughs> I started taking Adderall extended release. It also sucks because like, this is a drug that's very commonly abused by college students and other people, yeah. which means that getting the prescriptions filled is very hard. A lot of the medication used to treat ADHD is- High abuse potential. High abuse potential. Yeah. And so that means that people with ADHD usually get a lot of scrutiny when they're trying to get their meds. It is hell, it okay? It is awful. If your medication lapse when you have severe ADHD and you haven't, like you're not prepared to get it together really quickly, it can take like weeks and months of just like horrible calls to your insurance trying to get somebody to fill it. Also in college, People were constantly like, I don't know how people found out I had ADHD, but like it get, became known like pretty quickly that like people, I was someone that had a, a Ritalin prescription. And so people would just like somehow get my number and I'd get random texts being like, hey Jen, like do you know where I get some Adderall or like where I could buy some? The medication is like already, there's like a stigma with the medication. And then it's especially annoying when you're dealing with the fact that like people think that you're just doing party drugs. People think that you're not taking your shit seriously. People don't think that your diagnosis is real. Our diagnosis, is, is very, very real. real. This often comes up in like jobs that we have. It comes, comes up. up, it yeah. comes up. And it's people. hard to explain to people that like, no, my brain just works a little bit differently than yours. And like, I know things seem like they're simple to you, but the things that seem simple to you actually require a Herculean amount of effort for me. Yeah. It's really difficult to describe how ADHD like impacts your daily life because mm -hmm. it's really difficult to describe like executive brain dysfunction and mm -hmm. like what that means. You also can get like hyper fixated on things. So people can think that you can pay attention because you're hyper fixated on like one specific thing. It also affects your dating life a little bit because you are seen as flaky. Yeah, <laughs> that's something I've had to talk to with like partners in the past where I've been mm -hmm. like, hey, so I have ADHD and that means like sometimes I'll open text and read them and forget to respond or I'll, you know, I might need like a little bit of like extra time to confirm plans. You know, some people are like, hey, well, if she doesn't respond to my text right away, she doesn't like me. But it's like, yeah, that could be true. Or she could just have like very severe ADHD, like give her 30 minutes. I know now that if I need like an immediate response from Jen, I have to- You I, call me. I just, I have to FaceTime you. Yeah. I personally am someone who, unless I can physically like see your face, it's really difficult for me to pay attention. This is an example of like, the weird chaos of my bedroom. It's messy, right? Like these are all kind of messy piles, but it's organized. Like I have everything laid out in a way that I like it, even though it's not particularly pretty to look at. What's the ADHD thing about me that you notice the most? When you feel like you need to be doing something, you'll be kind of locked into a task at the expense of like several other tasks around you. So it's like, you'll be like, I need to get this like accountant, like money bill thing taken care of. Mm -hmm. And you'll like be like burning yourself on your curling iron, tripping over the cords as you set up lights. Cause it's sort of like, <laughs> there are other tasks that might be more urgent. Like you'll decide you need to do one task first. <laughs> and even if there's other tasks that seem more pressing you just they don't exist to you <laughs> if your brain is like you need to do this one thing it's difficult to get you off of that yeah <laughs> probably the most ADHD thing I notice about you is like in conversations you have like a seven minute window. And that's if you're taking medication. If you haven't been medicated, I have maybe 15 seconds. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think the obvious ways people can tell I have ADHD is like, yes, I struggle to sit still sometimes and I can be a little bit flaky. Like, you know, if somebody's like, usually if somebody's schedule gets broken, their life doesn't devolve. But for me, if my schedule gets broken, everything seems like it's falling apart. And the next thing I know, I'm naked, I don't have any laundry, I have shat everywhere. <laughs> everything is in ruins. We're in a pandemic. I haven't left my house in eight months. I have long hair again. See? I'm losing my mind. <laughs> this is a good piece of information for people that don't know ADHD, because uh -huh. I think this is one that isn't as obvious. Mm -hmm. But so a lot of times people with ADHD can be very sensitive to touch and sound. So Kristen is someone who is very sensitive to sound. Whereas if there's like a rhythmic sound, somebody without ADHD is able to ignore that stimuli and they can move past it. Whereas if there's like a rhythmic sound coming from somewhere, it will drive her absolutely bonkers. Her brain like, 
zeroes in on it. It zeroes in. I feel a sense of paralysis. And like for me, it's I similarly am very sensitive mm -hmm. to sounds, but I'm also really sensitive to touch. And so it's like I can't wear certain fabrics because I don't like the way they feel on my skin. I always have to have my tags cut off my clothes. I have all my tags I, cut off my can't, clothes. I don't really like being touched by people unless I know when it's coming and I can control it. Yeah, These are see. things that people really don't necessarily associate with ADHD, but they are common. But yeah, this, this is just one that, these are the ones that Kristen and I share. Yeah, it's so funny. You really don't like being touched. I don't, you yeah. truly, even by people you know really well. Yeah. Like Jen doesn't like being hugged or like nothing like that. I'm a prickly cactus. You are a prickly cactus. I mean, I love being touched. So like that doesn't really bother me, but I am very sensitive to like textures. Yeah. I'm sure that there's a lot of people who don't have ADHD who will watch this video and are like, that's, they have not really made a good case for what this is. I don't understand. But the thing is, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a lot of you that do you have ADHD that watch this video and are like, oh, I ADHD see it. ADHD is basically a disorder in which you have chronically bad executive dysfunction. By executive dysfunction, I mean you just cannot take care of your life. You cannot focus enough to do the basics so that you can live a life in this world. If you have ADHD, like, your life is not gonna be terrible. Like, clearly no, you can have an amazing clearly life. Clearly you can figure it out. Like, clearly, if, it, if this is something that you may be struggling with, don't just talk to one adult. Keep talking to adults until you find the adult who is gonna help you. If you are an adult, same, same advice. Okay, that's our ADHD video. Thank you for watching. We're gonna be making videos together. It's gonna be fun. Also, you should subscribe to our channel. I know you're not subscribing. I can see you, you through the computer. You should subscribe though. I've talked to the FBI agent in your computer and he is also concerned that you have not subscribed. Subscribe. Please. To us.